Welcome back, season finale, straight talk with Mr. Daly. Um, thanks for playing along. I do want to say that uh, if you missed episode three, as we always have, big fat head Mr. Daly's here to remind you what it was all about. And it was about the challenge. One hour a day of focused schoolwork for three weeks will make it a habit and improve your relations with your teachers, with yourself, with your parents, and so forth. And so the season finale, what better way to, to kick it off than the theme? And the theme of the day today is the path forward. And uh, joking aside, uh, I do believe that everybody in our building, including myself, teachers, everybody, can improve. And I ask the students, you know, what would it take for you as you look at your midterm marks, which are being uploaded uh, currently and will be available to you momentarily or within the week, you have to ask yourself when you look at your midterm marks, what would it take to improve five to 10%? That's my question to you. Now, for some of you who are uh, super high achievers, the answer may be, well, I can't do anything because I'm over 95. And, and then this message really is not going out to you. But to the bulk of us, I submit to you that a few simple things could be done for you to improve five, 10%. So I have a few ideas on this. The first one, and most importantly, I think, and I've been uh, delaying speaking about this, number one thing you can do for yourself if you want to succeed in school is attend. Be here every day as a habit. I don't know how many students I've seen as I look over their achievement, pulling off things like 75% with 10 absences at midterm. And what that says to me is that you're a phenomenal student with so much more potential than 75 if you have 10 absences at midterm. How many absences should you have at midterm? I don't know, zero, one, two. I mean, during COVID, maybe you stayed home a few times because you were sick and you were being responsible, and I support that. But 10 absences at midterm, 10 times two is 20. 20 absences, you're missing once a week. That's not the way to get the best marks you can. And if you want to improve five to 10%, starts with attendance. The second thing I think you should do and teenagers don't do as a habit these days is prioritize your health and sleep. You can't come to school on an empty stomach. You can't come to school uh, overtired and expect to achieve at the maximum you're able to. Eight to nine hours of sleep is what the average teenager needs. And although some of you may spend eight to nine hours in your bed, be honest with yourself and ask yourself if you have eight to nine hours of uninterrupted sleep, Uninterrupted includes flipping on the cell phone to watch a TikTok, to check out a message. These things do not belong in your bedrooms, and I understand that they're there, but they should be silenced and off during that critical time of sleeping. It's my belief that while you sleep, it's like taking all the stuff that's in your RAM in the front of your mind and puts it in your hard drive, in deep into your brain. I don't know how many times in my life I've gone to sleep thinking about something and woken up with a good solution. My mind was working while I rested. I, I submit to you that you should be prioritizing school over your part-time jobs. A little bit of a disclaimer here that if you are working a part-time job to support your family, and that is necessary for your household, of course, you should continue working that part-time job. But number one priority needs to be school. And if you are working a part-time job, you have to understand that you have a full-time job in school. If you're working the part-time job just so you can have spending money, so and buy nicer clothes and fancier gadgets and stuff like that, you, real, you gotta realize where your bread is buttered, it's in the classroom, that needs to be your top priority. You have a full-time job. Some of you can juggle too, but if you wanna know if you can or not, look at your report card. And if you are just working that part-time job for spare money, and it's affecting your marks, you have to quit that $15 an hour job to preserve your future ability of earning 30, 40, 50 dollars an hour in your full-time job. And the final thing you can do is participate in the three-week challenge. And I do, honestly, it's kind of a joke and a shtick, but it's true. I'm asking you for one hour of sustained work, uninterrupted, without distractions, for three weeks. And if you do that, I think you're gonna improve in school. You'll feel better about yourself. You're, and something I said to a student today is, you know, those students who get 95 who wake up and they come to school and they enjoy it, 
You ever wonder what they're, if they're different than you? I can tell you that they're not. They come to school, they wake up when they're tired, they come to school anyway. But over time, their success makes them want to keep coming. And for some of you, it's been a while since you've experienced that, that success. And that's what my three-week challenge is all about. If you sustain yourself for three weeks, I think you're going to um, achieve a level of success you may have not achieved in a while at school, and it'll make you want to continue that program, whether I've issued a challenge or not. And finally, as we uh, kick off the end of the season, I thought I'd just leave you with a bit of a reflection. I, I'm 47 years old now, and I look back on my life. And my life is all about education. And education has been everything to me. It's been my professional life, but it's been everything to me since I was young. Both my parents, my mother and my father, were educators. And this was instilled in me very early on in my life. But now when I look back, where, where the two things that are best in my life now happened, happened in university. So I went to McGill, where I wanted to become a teacher. Um, and it was a hard university to get into at the time. I had to have about an 85 average at a minimum to get into the program I wanted to. And I ended up having about an 89. So I exceeded the minimum because I didn't want to cut it close. But I asked myself, like, what would have happened if I didn't get that extra 10%? What if I had a 79 average and not an 85 average that I needed to get in? And it's not like I think that I would be, you know, homeless or destitute because I don't think I would have been. But I'll tell you the two good things in my life right now, the two best things in my life for my professional life, my career here at St. Thomas More but also my family at home. And you see, I met my wife at McGill. She's from Halifax, and I have four lovely children, and my family is everything to me. They bring me great joy. And those two things are the two things most responsible for this person in front of you today. But it probably is not what it is today without that five to 10%. So I, when I look back on my life, I thank my parents for instilling that in me. But I, and I look back and I thank myself for doing those things, but I'll be honest with you, when I was a teenager, I wasn't doing it for me and I wasn't thinking long term because teenagers don't really do that. I was just thinking about keeping peace with my good parents. And so whatever the reason is, whether it's because the principal's appealing to you or your parents have been on you or you connect with that special teacher or staff member in your life, I just ask you to find it within you to try to improve yourself five to 10% and maybe one day, and you're 47 or 50, you're looking back saying, uh, you know, that was a good time in my life when I made that choice to improve. Because a lot of us, we don't see the fruits of our labor immediately, but they do, we do get to see them in retrospect. And with that, I'm calling an end to season four. Um, I'm, I'm painting this beautiful picture of my life, but I'll tell you, I've had to activate plan A, plan B, plan C. Many times in my life, it hasn't always gone the way I had hoped and planned it. And then looking back, it turns out that plan C, plan B ended up being better than plan A anyway, in a lot of cases. But just as a disclaimer, when I'm talking about my wife, that was plan A. That was plan A. Lastly, that was plan A. So with that, that's the end of season four. Uh, I do honestly thank you for the time. I, I say sorry to the teachers if I've caused a disruption. I hope it's been helpful. Um, I'm going to send these home to parents so that you guys, they know what we're trying to do at the school. And I'm just asking everybody to try to be the best St. Thomas More night they can be. Have a great day.